should now consider whether the major religions of the world offer a solution to this challenge. Let us first examine the historical profile and ideological premise of Christianity. And to be very fair and objective to Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, alayhi salam, we should not link the history of Christianity to the life or the message or the person of Jesus Christ, alayhi salam. Rather, we should say that those who claim to be connected to Jesus Christ and have created their own system, we should refer to them as the Christologist. Although we Muslims believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him and his blessed mother, was a great prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the scriptures that prophesied his coming according to his own words and according to the Quran. Jesus Christ, he said in his own words, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he said he was not sent to the world. He also told his followers, the Nazarenes, Go not into the way of the Gentile, nor into any town of the Samaritans, but go rather into the house of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ himself never said that he came to bring the whole world peace. He came to bring a message. He came to bring a gospel. He came to prophesy that someone would come after him who would bring that peace. And although the actual life of Jesus Christ Salam, is a model of high morals, religious devotion, and insistence upon sacrifice and obedience for Almighty God, we find that the history of the Christian church to be diametrically opposed to the life and the message of Jesus Christ. And we find it to be associated with slavery, colonialism, segregation, homosexuality, and child molestation by priests who are responsible for administering the religious sacraments. We should point out that the participation of the church itself in the African slave trade and the post-colonialist apartheid of South Africa, the genocide conquest of Spain and Portugal in South America, the subjugation of the people of Southeast Asia and their central role in the shame of the Crusades itself disqualifies the modern church from such a role. Christianity or more accurately, the Christologists, as a world system, does not deserve to be associated with the great and sacred person of Jesus Christ, alayhi salam, and his blessed mother, nor does it qualify to lead the world towards the proposition of peace. And more than anything, peace requires a regulation, a manual, a manual that can regulate and be represented by government. The Christian church has never been able to develop a government. And that is why today it finds itself on the lower scale of the dichotomy between church and state. That is, throughout the world, the state of human beings and the government of human beings have subjected the church to a role of only rituals. Hinduism and Buddhism are clearly based upon caste systems where they consider in particular, the Hindus consider all sudras, and that word sudra is anyone who is not of the Brahmin class, the godly class, they call it. All sudras, that means the untouchables, in their own words, are on a level the same as the species of animals. And according to the Hindu belief, any Brahmin, the godly class, that kills a sudra, the atonement for killing a sudra is like the killing of a dog, a frog, a lizard, a crow, an owl, or an ant. Obviously, a belief that characterizes human beings like that cannot offer peace to the world. The Hindus also state in their own book that whatever is on earth belongs to the Brahmin. For the Brahmin, that is the godly class of human beings, is the highest among all human beings, and all things are for him, and all other things belong to him. As for the religion of Judaism, neither do they invite anyone to their religion, neither do they join anyone. They are an exclusive people, and we don't associate them with Abraham salam, and we don't associate them with Musa salam, because they have long ago, under the guise of Zionism, and under the tenets of their modern day scripture, the Talmud, they have long ago abandoned the tradition of Musa salam, and Ibrahim salam. And under the principle of Zionism, according to the Talmud, the Jews have a semi-divine status. 
and all non-Jews and Gentiles are called goyim, filthy, unclean subhumans. The Talmud itself is the preeminent legal authority for all Jews today. This clearly disqualifies them for providing the world with universal system of peace. Mm -hmm.